Hey, Bill, what day is it? Hey gang, Bill Massore here with another episode of Hey Bill, What Day Is It? Usually I try to produce one episode a week, but this week had a national day I just couldn't pass up, so I'm giving you a bonus. I've already released one for this week called National Doggy Date Night. If you haven't seen that one, click on the card above to watch. Then come back here and view this one. Let's take a guess what this day might be. Here, got any ideas? Go ahead, give it a try. No, not that one. Try again. Yep, you got it. It's National Missing Persons Day. Before we get started, I want to remind you of a picture from our last episode showing my wife and her two service dogs, Coco on her right and Lovey on her left. Since we recorded that episode, we've lost Coco. She was 12 years old, which is ancient for a great Pyrenees. We unexpectedly lost her to a malady which is common for that age and breed. We've all missed her and Lovey was so depressed that we decided to replace Coco with another Pyrenees. By the way, she was rescued just like all our other dogs. And her name is Coco. A coincidence? I don't think so. Moving on with National Missing Persons Day, most people don't know that 2,300 people go missing every day in America. It's terrifying to have someone right there with us and then all of a sudden they're gone. Perhaps a child is playing in the front yard and then suddenly they're gone. Most parents know the terror of losing sight of a child for even a moment. It could be a child or it could be an adult. Whoever's missing, it causes a sense of desperation and panic that is unbelievable. One minute they're there and the next they're missing. Most people think that that could never happen to me, but it does on a regular basis. Children go missing more, the, more often than adults and women more often than men. Even seniors are at risk of disappearing. According to the 2016 National Crime Information Center statistics, there were 88,040 active missing persons records. Missing persons leave a terrible void in the lives of all those who love or know them. That void is never filled until the person is found. There are many ways to get the word out about a missing person. We've all heard about amber alerts when children are abducted, as well as silver alerts for the elderly who drop out of sight. Sometimes you'll see pictures of missing children on the side of a milk carton, or on posters, or on the news. When a person is reported missing, all kinds of things start to happen. Law enforcement agencies begin to search. Many times dogs are called in to use their powerful sense of smell to track people down. Every available resource is put into play in order to locate someone who is missing. Their absence leaves empty hearts in those who have lost them. When you hear or see an amber alert or a silver alert, make special note of the car type and the license number. Even if you don't know them, you could be instrumental in locating a missing person and helping those who have lost that individual. Even if the alert seems far away, remember it could have been someone you love. Wouldn't you want everyone out there helping to find your loved one? I think you would. One of the most famous people who have gone missing is Jesus. He was loved by all who surrounded him during his earthly ministry. He healed the blind and lame, raised the dead and drove out demons. He was crucified and his body was taken down and laid in a tomb the same day. As if that weren't enough, when friends went to the tomb to apply the spices and ointments to properly prepare his body for burial, they found that his body was missing. The women who had come there were beside themselves with grief and not only from his death, but also the disappearance of his body from the tomb. The women went and told his disciples his body was missing who then went running to see if they were right or just hysterical from their loss. When they got there, they saw a radiant angel standing in the tomb who told them that he is not here, he is risen. It was then that the disciples remembered that Jesus had told them that he would be crucified and then resurrected on the third day. One of the first words we use when someone is missing is that they are lost. Every one of us is lost until we accept the gift of eternal life from Jesus, the one they thought was lost. 
But he's not lost. He's right where he's supposed to be, at the right hand of his Father in heaven. He's there interceding for all of us who have accepted him as our Savior and Lord. We can't go spend eternity with him if our sins haven't been forgiven, and he's the only one who can forgive them. I'm sure there are many of you who've lost loved ones to COVID-19. That is a true tragedy. But that isn't the worst tragedy. The worst tragedy is to die without Jesus. My mission in life is to let as many people as possible know the assurance that can only come by laying your sins, worries, troubles, and problems at the foot of Jesus' cross. There's a lot more information about how to do this on my website listed in the notes below. I know this hasn't been as humorous an episode as a lot of others, but finding that missing person and saving the lost is deadly serious. The wonderful thing and the joy in everyone's heart can be spending whatever time we have on earth loving Jesus and basking in his forgiveness and then spending eternity in his presence. I'm Bill Wasore, and this is Hey Bill, What Day Is It? Now get out there and prepare to have a triumphant eternity with Jesus. <laughs>